Hello there, uh, welcome to my new vlog. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Knott. I'm a PhD student at the University of Surrey in Guildford, uh, in the south of England. And I'm about 50% through my three year PhD in mechanical engineering. Um, I thought I'd come to the office, uh, get started on sharing what it's like to be a postgraduate researcher. Uh, today is Saturday, the 14th of May, 2016. It's a lovely day outside. I might put um, a little bit of footage just now of my commute because it's a nice little walk around the cathedral. And I thought I'd start a, uh, a vlog because I remember a year and a half ago, two years ago, when I was looking around for a PhD, um, there was a limited amount of information about what it's like to live as a postgraduate researcher. Uh, there are loads of blogs out there, but I feel like vlogs are easier to consume. Um, I watch loads of YouTube videos, so I thought I'd give this a go. Um, I also, I don't want to write any more than I need to. I'm not a natural writer. Um, it's been interesting trying to write papers because um, you find out more about uh, things like how to structure a story. Um, you find out what you can and can't do as a writer. Um, I also prefer to do a video because it's a lot more natural and authentic. Um, it's a lot easier. It's a lot more information dense, I feel. Um, Another reason why I want to start a vlog was because uh, I am publicly funded. So my PhD is funded uh, by EPSRC, and this is the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council. And it's basically an institution that gets some money from the government, and they decide where they want that money to go, and what research directions or what are the objectives over the next five, ten years. Uh, they can decide um, which universities get what, um, who gets what. Um, you can decide what areas. So for me in engineering, or um, EPSRC anyway, uh, there are some areas like manufacturing, uh, materials work, uh, nanotechnology, um, biomedical science, things like that. Um, <clears throat> and so because I am effectively funded by uh, the government, it is uh, taxpayers' money, so I, I feel like I should be sharing at least what is happening because I am using that money to live and to do my research. Um, I think uh, I feel a bit of an obligation to share what's happening. Um, also, another reason why I wanted to start a vlog is because I don't think there's enough PhD awareness out there. There's so much research going on in just in the UK alone but the vast majority isn't being shared. Um, I think this is, it's a bit tragic. Um, yeah, the work's being shared through um, the small little fields um, in academia, um, but I think it's, it would be beneficial to just share who you are as a researcher. And so I'm gonna try and do that. Um, I think it's come around recently because uh, I've been, writing a few more papers than usual and it's a bit of a creative process and I guess making a vlog is a creative process and so it's kind of percolating through into other things. Um, also another reason why I wanted to start was that I think uh, postgraduate researchers are underrepresented in, uh, in the video uh, medium. So I was looking around for some vlogs and there's some interesting ones, I, I quite like watching them. But there aren't enough uh, for me. I, I find it quite interesting to see what other researchers are up to. Um, so I was watching uh, Emma Cole's YouTube videos. Um, she, I think she has a doctorate now. But she was doing something to do with Greek literature. And she was based in UCL in London. Um, and she had some fun series where 
it was a video every day for 30 days and it was quite nice to watch um, I can think about how I would have watched that two years ago and thought oh wow so busy and when she is but I can now relate more to it because you have loads of things going on in your head you've got some work in several places and you've got loads of admin tasks and you've got some teaching to do and all this and you have to have a life as well um, so I could relate to a lot more but I think there should be more out there more awareness and so that's what I'm gonna try and do uh, I'm gonna try and in this first video I'm gonna try and talk about what it's like um, some good bad points that I've experienced um, it is going to be my perspective, of course, because it's going to be different for everybody. It's not like undergraduate or a taught postgrad, where you have set lectures, set assignments. Um, you're with a group of people who are doing the exact same work as you. Um, in a PhD, you're almost self-employed. Um, so I'll just go into the good points so far that I've experienced. Um, number one is flexibility. So you can spend your time however you want. You can be as isolated, uh, focused as you want on just your work. Um, or you can be more open. You can, I, I don't know, let the PhD not define you as a person. Um, you know, the PhD is just one part of your life. It might be a big part, but it's just a part. And you're not a PhD, you are a person. Um, also, it doesn't need to be in the exact same field as you did your undergrad or postgrad in. So, for me, exam for, for example, I'm doing mechanical engineering now. I work with composite structures, which I have an example. Um, let's see. So, I work with tubes, tubes that roll up, and I might talk about those another day. <clears throat> but I work with, uh, yeah, composite structures. But my undergraduate was in astrophysics, which is totally different to the work I'm doing now. Um, and my master's was in space science and engineering. Um, so I, I did my undergrad in Wales, in Aberystwyth. And I did my master's at UCL. And then I've come to Surrey. Um, it's all about convincing the interviewers at your PhD interview that you are the right type of person, that you're... Um, self-motivated, that you're interested in finding new things out. Um, there's no right or wrong answer in the interview. It's not like, here's a maths question. Well, this is what I found. It's not like an examination where you've got to have right, 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 correct answer, correct answer. You can be yourself and, yeah, it's, it's a nice, almost informal chat at times. Uh, that's what I found. So another point I'd like to make is that it is paid. So for science engineering type PhDs, you're paid for your work. Um, so I get it in the form of a bursary. And in the UK, they average between um, 13 and a half thousand to 20,000 a year, I think I've seen as the maximum. And it's a bursary, so it's tax free. So you can use a, oh, I'm getting notifications. Um, yeah, so it's paid, it's, it's, it's like a job. Um, also, one of the most important things I think about a PhD is travel. So you get to travel and share your work. Um, I remember when I was applying to PhDs, I thought, okay, I want to travel and I'm going to use this excuse as conferences to do it. And it does work. It, it's not just a holiday. You do do work, but it's also good to extend the time you're abroad for. So my first um, conference, for example, was in San Diego and so lucky to be doing it. Um, I managed to get a travel grant from the Institution of Mechanical Engineers to help me with the some flights and accommodation and then you can get some more funding to help with um, things like food when you're there uh, just for the conference. So for me the conference was Monday to Friday and then I extended it a little bit more so that I could so I, I self-funded myself to go to Hawaii to I don't know, basically have a whole day travel about um, that's one of the best things about PhD is that you get to travel uh, you can try and find an excuse to do a conference in I don't know I, later this year I'll hopefully be going to France and Toulouse to do a conference um, what else what else uh, 
And then I don't have any other conferences uh, planned at the moment, but definitely get some more. Um, I think it is important to say that travel isn't just an excuse to do holidays. It is good to meet researchers in your field. You see these names on papers and they're on the other side of the world, but then you get to see them and talk to them and ask them questions about their work. It, it adds, it puts a person behind that name that you see at the top of that paper, which is really good. And also I think travel, if you do traveling and you enjoy it, you know that it's a great character building experience. You, you see more about the, you see more of the world, which is, it's good for opening your mind up to what's out there, which I think as a researcher, you should be, you should be, um, open-minded, I think. Okay, so next I've got, um, it's fun. <laughs> it is really fun, especially if you like curiosity-driven things. If you like um, intellectual stimulation, you like finding new things out. PhD, of course, is loads of fun. You get to attempt to create or write up something that no one has ever done before. Uh, novel research and it's an interesting creative process because before the PhD I thought I wasn't very creative but and I guess that's because it's in I'm in science and engineering but it's actually the total opposite um, through undergrad and postgrad you learn these set things these theories the, this maths the physics but then a PhD it's almost like it's your turn to stand on the shoulders of giants. You get to create something new and share it. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. <laughs> um, so next I've got networking. So this is like the travel as well. Um, and there's loads of websites out there now that are helping researchers get their name out. So there's things like ResearchGate, uh, Academia.edu, I think it is, um, LinkedIn, of course. Um, oh, I'm forgetting loads of others. There's loads of social media platforms out there just dedicated to researchers. And it's really good for building up your career in the future, whether it's in academia or as a professional afterwards, if you, if you wanted to go into industry after the PhD. Um, next I've got confidence and communication and presentation. So. During the PhD, I found that there are loads of opportunities to present your research, and there are loads of little competitions that um, I think one that's been spread around the universities um, around the world now is something called the three minute thesis competition. So, this is uh, basically a challenge where you try and explain what your work is to a general audience, so the general public, in just three minutes. And it's actually really fun. So. You might be working with, I've got an example here, let's see if I can find some work. Um, so you might be working with loads of mathematics like that, that looks horrible. But then the fun stuff about presenting to the general public that I've found, it surprised me, is that you get to simplify it as much as possible and it's almost a challenge to yourself. Um, you don't use any jargon, you use very I'm not saying the general public is, is silly or is stupid, but you get to simplify it so that more people can understand it. And, and that's, it's a great thing because research is about making something new and generating impact, at the very least, those two things. And if you want to generate impact, you've got to be able to explain what you're doing, the, um, the benefits, the reasons why you want to do it, its context, like where it fits in, in your field and maybe in society. And it's really good. So there are loads of presentation opportunities when you're doing a PhD, maybe in your department, um, at conferences, um, where you're presented to the more uh, specialist uh, people. Um, it's really good skills to take, take through the rest of your career with whatever you do. Um, another advantage is that you get the opportunity to demo or teach or mark work from undergrads or postgrads. Um, so I've done a bit of this and it's quite fun. I've done some demoing, which is basically in the tutorial sessions for some modules. Um, I've helped with some mathematics and some engineering uh, modules. And 
it's quite fulfilling. It it surprised me at first because I thought <clears throat> I initially thought, oh, this is really simple. I don't know if I want to teach this. But then when you teach it to an undergrad who's only known it for a few weeks, you realize number one how far you've come, and number two, you want to help others understand what it's about because. I, I would have known this mathematics for, say, six, seven years. And at the time, I was in the exact same position as them. But now I've had it in my mind for so long that I think, oh, this is really simple. And it's nice to help undergrad students get to start that. Uh, I, I, I don't think I explained that very well, but uh, it's quite fulfilling. Um, and then uh, another good point that I've got, uh, it's... I'll get onto the bad points in a minute. But another good point is that you're in university still, and there's the university culture. Um, so, like, if you're a campus university, uh, there's loads of students everywhere. It's got a certain buzz or a feel to it. There are loads of sports and societies you can join. And I'd add that to one of the most important things about PhD is that you're still, back to the flexibility point, you can still spend your time, remember, however you want, and you can be as focused as you want on the work, or you can venture out to other things. Um, so my interests have actually, instead of narrowing, they've diverged. I've started, I started rock climbing here. Uh, I do some badminton societies. Uh, there's a postgraduate society, which is quite useful just for me. Um, I'm not sure what other societies, but of course, if you've been to university, you know that there are loads of groups for, if you can think of a group, there's probably a society for it and people around it that um, you'll probably get along with very well because they believe in the same things and value the same things. Um, yeah, it's, it's really fun to be in university still. Um, okay, so some of the negatives uh, I just jotted down. So I've got, there is some uncertainty at the early stage. So for the first two, three months, I didn't quite know what I was doing. And I think a lot of PhDs find this. Um, you're sort of thrown almost into the deep end and you've got to do a lot of reading, uh, figure out what what do people know at the moment in your area and then you have to try and pick out what you think you want to work on and what you think you're going to add to the area. And so for me there was a lot of uncertainty because this isn't my field. I'm not really an engineer. I was an astrophysicist. Um, so I didn't know what composite structures were a year and a half ago. And so I'm supposed to be an expert in it in three years. And so there's a lot of reading to do. <clears throat> um, also, compared to undergrad, there aren't set lectures and assignments. So you have to be quite self-motivated and on it at times because there's sort of no benchmark. Every PhD is different, and so it's harder to measure how good, how bad, where the improvements uh, needed are uh, of what you're doing at the moment. So that there can be some uncertainty, which um, I think it's inherent because you are supposed to be doing research. Um, it's supposed to be new stuff, so it's it's going to have some uncertainty in there. Um, next, another bad point is it can be isolating. So, as I said, undergrad and postgrad, you've got lots of friends uh, who have the same lectures, the same assignments, so there's a group that you can work with, potentially. Whereas, as a postgrad researcher, sometimes there's a lot of time just sitting at a desk, like these ones here, and staring at a computer for loads of time. Uh, the next point I've got is back pain, because you are just sat down a lot, um, so that's why I think you should do some sports. Um, another uh, annoying little task is doing admin. So here we're supposed to do submit a report every month of like progress. Um, it's quite short. It's like I think a page or two, just bullet points of what's happening. Um, and then I also have uh, s uh, every six months uh, interim reports, which are a slightly bit bigger, more long term planning. Which it is, it is useful to see what's happening, but then a lot of admin, you spend a lot of time doing emails and things like that that you don't want to be doing as a researcher. Um, it, it just adds that little bit more extra load onto 
the research, that, which is what you want to do. Um, another point is sometimes there's an overwhelming amount of work, and so you need to have some p perseverance, um, and you need to be organized. So what I've found over the last year and a half is that it's really good to have little post-it notes of the work that you want to try and accomplish over the, the next day or the next week. Um, especially the next day, it's really good <clears throat> to like break tasks down, and everyone probably knows this already, break tasks down into bullet points and plan exactly what you want to do um, the following day. Because then when you get to the office in the morning, you know exactly what you're going to work on and you're going to do it. Um, Sorry, oh. I'm having trouble with the connection. Go away, Siri. That said, I'm a, I don't actually um, go to the office that much. I've only d started doing it recently because I have a lot of uh, computer coding to do, which I have to do on this computer. Um, I think offices are perhaps one of the worst modern inventions ever because they aren't exactly inspiring, are they? I mean, look behind me. I... Uh, I don't think anyone wants to work in a place like this. It's just dull and lacking in anything inspiring. And as a researcher, you're supposed to be working on new research, new things that no one's done before. And I think that if you come to your PhD and you're forcing yourself to go to the office just to put the hours in. Um, that might work for some people, but for me, um, it doesn't. I don't see the point in just doing a 9 till 5. I see the point in doing, okay, I feel like going in at 10 or 11 today, and then pumping out a few good hours of productive work where, where I could achieve a good amount of work in 2 to 3 hours versus spending 9 till 5 just being stagnant in a place that's it's not it's not perfect I don't think All right so I hope you've enjoyed the video and that you got something out of it um, I know that I erm um, a lot uh, I don't want to cut videos um, might try it in the future if I notice it becoming too much of a problem but I hope you have a good day see you next time